Okay. Thank you. Well, on behalf of uh, the CME group and myself, I want to thank Phillips Futures for uh, hosting this webinar. Uh, it should run about 40, 45 minutes, and then we'll leave some time at the end for questions and answers. So um, let's get started. A quick disclaimer, remember uh, derivatives and OTC swaps, they're not suitable for all investors and involve the risk of loss. So as we always tell people at the beginning and the end of our webinars, uh, do your homework. All right, so about a year ago, more than a year ago, on May of 2019, we launched the Micro Re Mini Futures. Uh, we have a contest usually uh, for day one in terms of picking the volume, who will get closest to uh, picking the volume. And uh, the most optimistic projection was 100,000 contracts the first day. Well, we did three times that. We did over 300,000 contracts, and since then we've done about 400 million of them. Uh, when I did many of those launch webinars, just like I've done uh, the launch webinar for the uh, the options here. And the number one question that we got is, when are we going to do options on the micro EVs? And so, well, here we are, a little bit more than a year later. On August 31st, we actually started trading them. So they've been trading uh, almost a month now, and we've done about five or six thousand contracts a day, which is is an excellent start for an options contract. Uh, it takes you know sometimes months, if not years, to develop. Uh, liquidity and critical mass in an actual options contract. So um, we're very, very fortunate. And uh, for those of you that are, should we say, have smaller account sizes or want to bring the risk down a little bit, uh, this is a contract that allows you to do those things. We're going to launch, we launched uh, micro size options on two of our benchmarks. We launched the micro e mini S&P 500 and options on the micro e mini NASDAQ 100. We don't have the options on the Dow or the Russell 2000 yet. We may launch those in the future. What we're trying to do is establish some core liquidity in these two contracts first. Those are the biggest ones, NASDAQ and the S&P 500 are the two biggest benchmarks um, and in terms of trading volume actually. So we, when we establish core liquidity in those, we may look to launch other products. Uh, when you want to establish core liquidity, one of the things you need is liquidity in the underlying. And this is a chart now that goes back to the launch of the micro e mini futures. And you can see when we first launched, they trade between 400 and 500,000 contracts a day. Uh, and then, then the pandemic hit and we got February and March 2020. And you can see we went over a million, over 2 million, uh, trading between generally about a million, million and a half, 2 million contracts a day. So you can see liquidity is ramped up very, very nicely. And that bodes well for the option. And on the next chart, we also have uh, daily, uh, we have since the launch, October, excuse me, August 31st, we have uh, the daily volume. And you can see on the high side, it's traded as high as seven or 8,000 contracts a day, on the low side, around 1,000. So uh, we've traded well over 100,000 contracts since we launched, eh, basically 20 trading days ago. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see, to watch this grow over the next couple of months and years. But this is very good liquidity. We're off to a great start. Um, to do five, 6,000, you know, out of the gate is uh, a very successful product. So the volume is coming to the CME group. And if you look at these are the options on the S&P 500. This is all our S&P 500 options products. The mini, the standard S&P, and now soon uh, the micro options will definitely be contributing to this. But you can see volume and open interest going uh, up and towards the right, which is what you want. Uh, you can see the percentage of the volume that's done by the mini S&P options is about 98%. So much of the volume has been concentrated. We think that'll change now. The mix will change. So there'll be a lot of volume into the micros. Again, though, it will take months, if not years, to establish that kind of growth. All right, so why trade options on micro e mini futures? All right, first of all, you get the ability to do precision trading and scaling. Given that it's one-tenth the size of the e minis, uh, traders can now scale S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 exposure up or down with greater precision. Uh, we have an example of this later on. We all have traded a one lot. We buy one, it goes up, and we sell it. And then yet it keeps going up after we sell it. Uh, we don't have the flexibility because we only did a one lot. Well, the nice thing about these micro contracts is that you could do 10 of them. 10 of them is equal to one E-mini. So you could maybe, if it goes up, you sell five and keep five riding higher. Uh, we'll have an example on that later. It also adds versatility to your strategy. Um, you've got, you could trade long or short views uh, with 
a choice of expirations. We have weekly expirations, Friday weekly expirations. We have end of month and quarterly expirations. So you can make market neutral, directional, multi-leg strategies. You can take advantage of any opportunity, anything that you can do in other options, you can do with the micro e-mini options. You also get to access the micro e-mini futures liquidity. Um, the nice thing, again, about having a very, very liquid futures contract is it translates down the road into liquidity in your options. So uh, they were the most successful product launch in CME history, and we look uh, for the options to also be very, very successful as they grow even more so. We have the CME Clearinghouse. Uh, they're the ones that mitigate risk. They do it at the brokerage firm level, the SCM level, uh, the client level, and also the exchange level, obviously. And they're the ones that set and change margin requirements. So they collect variation margin payments and they make sure of the integrity, they ensure the integrity of the buyers and the sellers in every transaction. Uh, this is for U.S. investors only, uh, only domicile in the United States. The tax efficiencies are not available to non-North American traders and non-U.S. traders. Uh, the micro versus e-mini offset and margin offset, uh, that's the nice thing. You can buy a one e-mini and you can offset it with 10 micro e-mini options. Uh, you just have to instruct your FCM to do so and then they will take care of things with the clearinghouse. You also, if you do futures versus options, you will often get uh, some kind of margin offset. So there's good capital efficiency, which we all know capital is very precious and we want to make sure we use it wisely. Liquidity. Uh, most people know about the ETF market. It's a very, very liquid market, very popular market in, uh, all over the world, especially in uh, the United States and Europe and in Asia too. The S&P 500, the futures complex, trades about nine times the value of the S&P 500 ETF, and the trades about more than 60% greater than the value of the underlying cash S&P 500 basket. Same thing with the NASDAQ 100. It trades about eight times the value of the NASDAQ 100 ETF and about 20% more than the underlying value of the underlying cash basket. So you have excellent liquidity in the futures complex and also in, in our e-mini options and soon to be our micro e-mini options. You have around the clock trading, which certainly in the Asian time zone, uh, it's nice to have a, a futures contract that's open all the time. On many of our futures contracts, we trade as much volume in European time zone and in Asian time zone as we do in the US time zone. So it's, it's one thing to have liquidity during U.S. hours, but if you want a truly global product and you want to attract global users, you have to, um, you have, to have liquidity available in the Asian time zone, too. Uh, futures market strength, technical levels are determined in the futures, not the underlying. Uh, so when people do a lot of their technical analysis, there's so much money that flows into the futures market that technical levels, moving averages, RSI are based on the futures market, not the underlying S&P 500 cash. So that's a testimony to uh, how liquid and how popular the futures are. And of course, we have a diverse client base. Over 160,000 unique accounts trading micro e mini futures. And since launch in May, we have 75,000 accounts being first time traders at CMB Group. So we look for the options to increase this. Now, that's incredible that in just over a year, we have 75,000 first time traders uh, trading at the CME Group, which is amazing. All right, on this next page here, we uh, compare options on stocks versus options on futures. Now, many people trade options on stocks. They trade options on ETFs. Very similar. Um, you know, the whole point of exercise, assignment, delta, gamma, theta, and vega, all the derivatives that, that go with trading options, the four dimensions, apply to options on futures the same as they do options on stocks. But there are some nuances. There are some characteristics that are a little bit different. So the underlying, well, obviously an option on futures, you get a futures contract, you get one futures contract. When you do options on stocks here in the United States, at least, you use the underlying as 100 shares of stock or 100 shares of the ETF. Uh, the tick values, it varies by product. Some are a penny, some are a quarter of a, you know, quarter of a point. Some of them are, you know, a dime, one tenth of a point. Uh, generally, options on stocks, again, at least in the uh, United States, it's, it's a penny. They go in 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, or 0.05 increments. Expiration considerations. Uh, when you exercise or you're assigned a futures contract, you have to remember you're getting um, a 
futures contract that has a discrete expiration. So if it's stock index futures, it'll expire in December, March, June, and September. There's four quarterly expirations for uh, stock index futures. Um, so but options on stocks, though, when you get exercised or assigned, uh, stocks can be held indefinitely. They don't expire at four times a year like futures do. Some futures expire a lot more than four times a year. Around the clock trading, yes, you have a, uh, around the clock trading and options on futures. Uh, options on stocks here in the US at least, you can do some after hours trading and pre-market trading. Liquidity in the middle of the evening though is very sparse. It's very uh, very inadequate. Uh, whereas uh, E-minis and the micro E-minis, there's really good liquidity even at you know two in the morning US time. Asset classes available, you have equities, you have currencies, you have interest rates and you have commodities. Uh, with options on stocks, you're basically just dealing in equities for the most part. Liquidity uh, varies. It depends on the futures contract. Many of them are very, very liquid. Some of them less so. And the same thing with options on stocks. Some of them are very, very liquid. Some of them less so. Tax efficiencies, uh, this, that doesn't apply to, to Asian investors, Asian traders. Uh, so margin and capital efficiencies, usually for a futures contract, you put down three to 10% of the notional amount. So you're, you're very capital efficient. Options on stocks, the underlying, you put down 50% and you borrow 50%. So it's a little bit different. Margin with stocks and margin with futures are different. Volatility issues, uh, something called skew. Uh, which shows uh, basically in the stock market, skew tends to price out of the money puts greater than out of the money calls. With some futures contract options, uh, the skew is the same. The out of the money calls and the out of the money puts are equal volatilities. They're not far away from each other. But in stock index futures, uh, out of the money puts uh, trade far higher implied volatilities than out of the money calls in stock index futures but in treasuries in currencies and gold and in um, crude oil, that's different. The skew is different depending on the asset class. It just so happens that commodities are cyclical. They go up a lot, they go down a lot. But the stock market, uh, at least in the United States, when things go down, they go down a lot further, a lot faster uh, in general, which is why out of the money puts are skewed towards a higher volatility than out of the money calls. So that's a pretty fair comparison of the two products and uh, some things that you should be aware of. All right, here's the contract specs now uh, for the options on the micro e-mini and the options on the micro e-mini NASDAQ. MES is the ticker symbol, the underline for the options on the micro, and MNQ is the underline for the option on the micro e-mini and NASDAQ. Uh, minimum price fluctuation for the options is a quarter of an index point, which equals $1.25, and that's if the premium is five index points or above. It's a reduced tick, a smaller tick, one-fifth the size tick, um, if the premium is at or below five index points. Uh, the trading hour is very simple. We're open 24-6, basically. We open up at 5 o'clock on Sunday evening, Chicago time, and we trade all the way till 4 o'clock p.m. on Friday. So there's maybe a 45-minute or a one-hour trading halt at, uh, starting at 3.30 or 3.15 uh, Chicago time, and it opens up again uh, 45 minutes later. The product code, uh, the quarterly options, MES, the end of month option is EX and the weekly options are EX one through four. We'll have a calendar that will make this a little bit more clear um, a little bit later on. So the listing cycle, we'll have two quarterlies, three end of months, five Fridays, that's three weeklies, one, two, and four, and two serials. Um, the option style, the quarterly expirations uh, are American style weekly and end of month are European style. So um, we'll talk more about that later on. Uh, we're gonna, we have a market maker program, which is done, they've done a pretty good job. Uh, they, we, they were around at launch and they help provide core liquidity. We incentivize them to provide liquidity in all three time zones. We're gonna skip a couple slides here. Some slides I'll spend a lot of time on, some I'll skip. Here's what I wanted to talk about. As of August 31st, when we launched the product, these were the expirations that were available. And as some of these expirations come off the board, which some of them have already, we would launch new weeklies and new serials, or new week three, as they're called sometimes. 
So you can see, just pretend it's August 31st for a second. Uh, there's a weekly Friday that goes off September 4th, one that goes off September 11th, um, a quarterly that goes off September 18th, the ones in green are quarterly. Remember, September and December are two of the main quarterly expirations along with March and June. Everything else is a weekly or an end of month option. You can see September 30th, October 30th, November 30th, uh, we have end of month options. So as the September go off, the 4th, the 11th, the 18th, and the 25th, those have all expired now, and the end of month will expire on Wednesday the 30th. We will launch, you'll have October weeklies, October 2nd, October 9th. You'll have the serial month, October 16th, and October 23rd, and the end of month in October. So don't be con Confused by the week threes you see down there in blue. Those are actually serial month options. All right. But just refer to this calendar. And if you can go to cmegroup.com, you will actually see the expiration calendar will list every option that we have available going out several months. So this is just a, to give you a pictorial diagram to make it a little bit easier to understand. You got a lot of expirations available. So you can. Um, uh, for event-driven traders, you know, any kind of economic news that's coming out or earnings season, uh, you have a lot of expirations to choose from. And it just, just uh, graphically displays it in a different way, but, <coughs> excuse me. Quarterly options are American-style expiration. You can uh, exercise any time between the purchase of the option and the final day of trading with European styles, you can only exercise on the final day of trading. So we have here the E-mini S&P options and the micro E-mini options. Now you see there's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday weeklies with the ES. That's the only option that has those. The micro E-mini option does not have Monday and Wednesday weekly. It only has Friday. The NASDAQ, E-mini NASDAQ, and the micro E-mini NASDAQ has only Friday weeklies. All right. They all have end of month. They all have Friday weeklies, but only the E-mini option has a Monday and a Wednesday. So additional flexibility there with the Monday and the Wednesday weekly. All right, so let's look and see how this, uh, how these premiums will trade and how they'll change. Uh, and the difference, we'll compare them with the standard S&P, the E-mini S&P, and the micro E-mini S&P. And this is a vertical spread, the 3270, 3370 call option spread. Uh, it's a vertical spread, a bull spread with calls. And uh, you can see the standard S&P, the 3270 call is 6410. The 3370 is 2180. So you buy one, you, if you buy the lower strike, you sell the higher strike. And the spread actually costs you 42.30 points. The multiplier in the standard S&P is 250. It's a very large contract. The notional value is about $800,000. That's a very large futures contract. And the reason why we launched an E-mini, even the E-mini has gotten very, very large, which is why we launched the micro E-mini. So we kept uh, the bull market kept growing and growing and it made the notional value of futures contracts very, very costly. So the cost of the spread is $10,575 for the standard S&P. Look at the E-mini though in the next column over, 64 points, 21.75. Now, why are they different? Shouldn't they be the same? No. First of all, the tick size is different. With the mini S&P, the tick size is a quarter. It can be only a quarter, a half, three quarters, and then even. So with the standard S&P, the tick size is a dime, 0 0.10. So that alone dictates that you're not gonna have identical um, premiums, all right? So they're very similar though. And if they get too far out of line, our richers and spreaders will bring them back into line. So. Uh, it's 42.25 for the cost of the spread in the E-mini, and given that it's a 50 contract multiplier, that's a $2,112 spread. Now look over in the last column, the far right, micro E-mini, they're a $5 multiplier. They would trade very similar to the E-mini because they have a tick size that's the same. It's just it's a one-tenth the size contract. So 42.25 times five is very simply, $211, so you can see a huge difference there in the premiums that you would pay to do a vertical spread in the micros. Again, uh, those with uh, less well-capitalized accounts, those that want to risk less margin or risk less premium, the micro options, the micro-remini options might be the product for you. 
Uh, same thing, different strategy though. We're looking at 3260 call put straddle and uh, the micro e minis and comparing it with standard S&P and the e-mini S&P. So you can see the August 3260 straddle. Uh, this is expired by the way. When I made these slides, it was uh, July actually. Um, the standard S&P was at 150.80. The e-mini was 150.75 and the micro e-mini was 150.75. We'll multiply by the 250, 50 and $5 respectively multipliers, you could see the straddle for the standard S&P was 37,700, 7,500 for the E-mini and $753 for the micro E-mini. So a gigantic, very, very large difference in the cost of a straddle. And again, this is attractive to traders that are getting started, either new traders, novice traders, those with less experience or those with smaller account size. Remember, there's, gonna, there's no guarantee that the E-mini and the micro E-mini options will trade at identical prices for a given strike and a given expiration. Um, I want to call your attention to the bottom right-hand side, um, event-driven trading. Uh, nice thing about equity index options, they provide a deep pool of liquidity for investors to express a view of some kind of market-moving economic report. Uh, we have short-term options. We have, you know, Friday weekly expirations. We have end-of-month options. And on unemployment report days, trading in the two weekly options, usually uh, it, it's double what the average ADV is in uh, regular options. Uh, so or any earnings announcement on NASDAQ or S&P component companies, they can move markets and create trade opportunities. The nice thing about short-term options, well, the disadvantage is you have state of risk or time decay. Uh, with an option that's got a week or two to expiration, it's going to have greater time decay. But it's also going to have greater gamma, which means if the market goes in your direction, the deltas are going to change quickly, and this option is going to gain value very, very quickly. And by the same token, if you sell these options, they're going to go against you quickly, too. So be careful when you sell options to open a position. All right, so let's look at some of these short-term micro options. Let's look, we'll look at August, week one, week two, week three, week four, and then the September quarterly. This is in NASDAQ, the micro e-mini NASDAQ 100 options. And we're looking at the 11,090 strike. Look at the premium of the August week one, 92.25. Look at the premium of the September quarterly, 402. It's five times, four or five times. The price of an August week one. That's, that's a huge, huge difference. The premium in dollar terms goes from 1,845. September quarterly is $8,000. Uh, for the premium, though, look at it in the micro e mini options since the multiplier is two uh, versus 20 for the e mini NASDAQ. Uh, it's $184 and $804, respectively. Uh, a huge cost saving. Uh, again, Having a much smaller, a one-tenth the value of the E-mini uh, brings with it uh, affordability, uh, less risk, and uh, that's, that's ideal for people that are new to trading. Uh, this, is, this is one of the nice things. In the old days, we only had quarterly options, all right? Long before weeklies were launched or introduced, we only had quarterly, and sometimes we had uh, monthly options. And you can see the premium is a lot more. You'd have to, if you wanted to trade based on some news that's happening next week, you'd have to go way out to a quarterly expiration. It would be infinitely more expensive, um, dramatically more expensive. But now we have weekly options. You can parse out your risk in smaller, discrete time frames and reduce your risk because uh, the shorter the expiration, the less the time premium of the option. I'm going to skip a few pages here and just get into this here a little bit. We're going to talk about some strategies. Uh, so just a couple of things here, uh, some takeaways. Uh, so as with micro futures, smaller size options contracts, they allow traders to more precisely scale in or out. All traders have been in a position where they buy a one lot and watch the market rocket higher after they offset the one contract. With micro e mini options, the smaller size allows you to trade 10 lot. 10 micro e mini S&P options would be the equivalent to one e-mini option. If the market goes in your favor, you can scale out of a few contracts and still be in the market as it continues to uh, continues its advance and gradually reduce your position as it goes higher and higher, or in the case of uh, short selling, lower and lower. It's a technique that's often employed by professional traders. Every professional trader I know, and I hang around with a lot of them, they always scale in and scale out of a position. So let's take an example. The trader buys 10 
3,200 MES call option with the underlying at 3,190. So these are slightly out of the money. Their trading system is based on the relative strength index, RSI. Uh, RSI is an overbought, oversold indicator. For those of you that don't know, um, anything above 70 is getting very overbought and probably a lot of counter trend movement. Anything 30 or below is getting very oversold and you know, probably not a good time to initiate new short positions and might even consider long positions. Again, it's not a perfect indicator, but uh, it's used by many, many traders. It's a, it's a good, it's used in conjunction with other indicators and usually uh, needs some refinement. But So this trader that I know, this is based on an illustration based on a trader that I know that does RSI trading. Uh, any move below 30, he generates a buy signal. Any move above 75 generates a sell or reduction in position size. So let's flip the chart and you can see um, on the top panel, you see the futures and on the bottom panel, you see the relative strength index. So uh, you see that first arrow on the RSI goes below 30. And so that generates the buy signal. He buys 10 calls of the 3200 micro e mini S&P 500. Uh, the futures are at 3194 approximately. And when you have an oversold condition, like an RSI of 30, sometimes you have these counter trend rallies, and that's exactly what happened. The market rallied up, and the, the trader sold five contracts, at least five remaining contracts. Uh, and he sold because the RSI went above 70, 75. So he gets a sell signal to either sell his position out or reduce the size of the position. But he still keeps five of them. So... The market tends to go up further and further, and he sells three more when the RSI gets above 75 again, which it does. Um, you can see the arrows. It gets, actually, it gets above 80. So he sold five, then he sold three. He bought 10, so he let me use two left. Uh, and this is the nice thing about scaling and scaling out. The market goes higher. You're not left behind but buying a one lot, selling a one lot. He's got two left, and the RSI goes to 85, basically. And uh, he sells out the remaining position. So he's able to stay in the position a little bit longer and take home a little bit more profit, right? And here's how it looks if you just do a, a little summary going from July 16th through July 21st, which is when this, these trades happen. The futures in that time frame went from 3194 to 3250. So they rallied about 57 points. The futures rallied 57 points, but look at the 3200 call. It went from 56 to 78. It only rallied about 22 points. Why is this? Why did the option not move as much as the future? Well, simple. Options are four-dimensional instruments. There's time decay. There's the impact on volatility. And volatility changed. And also you had time decay. You had about a week of time decay, five trading days of time decay. You also had a delta factor. Of 0.49, which means that the option is only going to move about half as much as the underlying future. The future goes up 10 points, your option is only going to go up five points. So if the futures goes up 57 points, you're going to go up about half of that. And uh, that delta gets greater and greater and greater because of gamma uh, as the futures rally more and more and become more and more in the money that option. So you have to be very careful. You have to keep a lot of things spinning in the air. Uh, you have to think in four dimensions when it turns, comes to options because the impact of volatility, time decay, and delta are going to, you know, they're going to weigh on that option and how far and how fast it will move. All right, let's look at volatility now. There, um, I believe Phillips will be um, archiving these presentations, and uh, therefore you can see them again and all the pages that I skipped, you can review them again. They have permission to send my, I give Phillips my permission to take the PowerPoints and send them out too, as long as it's in a PDF format. What we have here is the volatility, implied volatility of the S&P 500. For those that don't think that volatility is important, um, well, you should know this. <laughs> uh, volatility has a tremendous impact on options, all right? Most people look at a volatility chart and this uh, represents the S&P 500 for the three years ending August 21st of 2020. You can see on the low side, you know, six, 7%, and on the high side, roughly 30, 35%, except for that pandemic spike uh, that occurred in March of this year, where it went up almost to 77%, the implied volatility. 
And you can see um, this, this shows you what's high volatility, what's low volatility, but the actual impact on premiums, there's a better way to measure it. So we have, we've uh, come up with these things called implied volatility percentile rankings. And you can see here, uh, first column is high, 90th percentile, 75th, 50th, 25th, 10th, and the low. So for the past three years, the highest and high volatility has been at 75.77. That would be the 99.999 percentile. For those of you, you all know what percentile rankings are. Uh, if you're in the 90th percentile, it means that volatility is higher than 90% of all the prior volatilities in the past three years. Only 10% of the time does volatility go higher than 24.78%. By the same token, the 10th percentile is 7.67. We haven't been that low in a long, long time. It's been a year or two at least since we've had volatility in the 10th percentile or lower. It was only two years ago we were at about 6.5% volatility. And uh, we have to drop pretty far pretty fast to get to 6.5 because we're still in the 20s. We're still almost the 90th percentile right now. But I put it in the second column. So we have the at-the-money implied volatility, and then I put the at-the-money straddle in points, and then the at-the-money straddle uh, for the 50 multiplier of the E-mini S&P, and then uh, the at-the-money straddle for the micro E-mini straddle. And you could see in the high, the straddle was trading at 556 points. Just coming down to the 90th percentile reduced that straddle by 556 to 182. So. Uh, look over to the next column, the after money straddle in dollars was $27,800 at the high, and the 90th percentile was 9124 So if you bought options at volatility at 75%, you bought the highest probably for 12 years, the highest uh, it's been since the financial crisis in 2008. Uh, you can see in the micros, you would only pay 2784 But again, look at the difference between buying high volatility and the 90th percentile. Um, big difference there. So if you don't think that volatility has a major impact on options premiums, look again. So go down to the 50th percentile now, you see the at the money straddle in points is 88.90. Substantially lower than the high volatility at 5, 556 or in the 90th percentile straddle when it was 182. Uh, the idea is to buy volatility in the lower percentile ranking and sell volatility when it's in the higher 90th percentile or above, or at least 75th percentile and above. It's buy low, sell high with options as well. And we have the same thing for NASDAQ. The, the charts look very, very similar, almost identical because the volatility in the stock market, they track each other pretty well. Uh, they just frame shift up and down a little bit. And there you go, there's the percentile rankings. Again, the NASDAQ got the highest was 75.64, the lowest was 9.96. NASDAQ being a little more volatile than the S&P 500, um, although now that we have uh, the S&P 500, 25% of it is in technology. So technology gets very, very volatile. It's gonna be reflected in the underlying implied volatilities too. All right, so we're gonna do one little quick thing here, and then we'll go to the question and answer. When I'm teaching options to newcomers or novices, uh, I always try to emphasize that options are four-dimensional and they require a little more upfront homework if you really want to get optimal results. So all traders should know before you put a trade on, you know, especially if you're just buying a call, buying a put, what's the upside break even? What's your downside risk? How sensitive is your option to the movement of the underlying futures? In other words, what's its delta? How volatility impacts uh, premium? which we just went over, uh, how the passage of time impacts premium, and much more. Well, we have a tool on the CME website called Quick Strike, and it offers a way to calculate these items very quickly and very simply. So let's just say a trader believes the market will advance to new highs before the September 21st expiration, which it did actually for a while, and then it came down. So this is just an illustration, all right? Uh, so it will advance to new highs at September 21st expiration, except micro futures are at 3262, all right? Given the large market swings, the person decides they want to use options on the micro e mini S&P futures. Trader goes long, the micro e mini, that 3260 call option at 111, which is a premium of about $555, all right? So as most smart traders do, they calculate the following. 
what's the maximum risk, what's the maximum reward, so on and so forth, all right? So here's quick strike, here's what it looks like. And you can see down there in the rectangular, the red rectangular box, the 3260 call. You can see your long one because there's not a negative sign. If there was a negative sign, you'd be short one. But there's a positive, if there's no positive sign, but it's implied unless there's a negative sign. So 3260, your long one, and there's the premium of 111, the volatility of 21.06. The delta is 52, which means it moves about half as much as the underlying. <clears throat> So that's one part of quick, quick strike. If you're a market maker, you do a lot of different options among different strikes, you can input all the strikes. If you're long and you're short all the way on down the line. So you can take a complex position and it will basically dissect it into four numbers. And here's another, uh, this is another quick strike view. Um, this uh, gives you the Greeks, it gives you days to expiration, it gives you a whole bunch of things. But look at the rectangular box again, and it takes your position, it could take no matter how complicated the position is, it'll break it down into four numbers. It'll tell you what your delta is, tell you what your gamma is. In other words, how will your delta change given a one point move in the underlying? Vega tells you the impact of volatility. If volatility goes up or down by one full percentage point, this option will gain or lose 5.2 points. Theta is negative because when you're long options, you suffer from time decay. Time decay has a negative adverse impact. In this case, you lose 0.93 points every day that goes by. Remember, options are wasting assets, all right? So you see the delta, the gamma, the vega, and the theta. And this is like the dashboard. It tells options traders where they're at, where they want the market to go, so on and so forth. While you're long a call, you want the market to go up. You're long a call that's got a delta 52, has half the sensitivity of the underlying futures. Every percentage point change in volatility, up or down, will go, will um, take 5.22 points off this option as measured by Vega. And every day that goes by, you're gonna lose 0.93 points, all right? So again, this is quick strike. Uh, you have to play with this a little bit. You have to work with it. Uh, put some positions in and watch how it works and you'll get better with it. It takes time. Uh, the nice thing about it is it's free. When I started trading options about three decades ago, it required thousands of dollars to purchase options position analysis software. Well, you can get it off our website now for basically free. So uh, it's a good good tool to work with that'll help you get a little bit more comfortable with options, it'll help you understand the risk of options and how the different four dimensions interact with each other, how time, uh, how time to expiration, uh, the relationship to the strike price to the underlying price and how time decay and volatility will impact your options position. Okay. And that's a profit loss diagram of a long call, obviously. And uh, so here's what we do. All right, so what's the premium, what's the maximum risk? Premium paid or 111 points or $555. What's the maximum reward? Theoretically unlimited. What is the Upside break-even point, it's the strike plus the premium. So 3260 plus 111 is 3371. How sensitive is the option relative to the underlying? Well, it's 52 delta, 52% 52 delta. So it's gonna move about half as much as your underlying futures. If volatility dropped from 21 to 20, how will this impact the premium? Well, by 5.22 points. Every one percentage point change is gonna either tack on or cause a 5.22 point loss, depending on volatility goes up or down. How does time decay impact this position? Well, every day that goes by, you're gonna lose 0.93 points. That's about $5 a point. So you're gonna lose $4.65 a day will be lost just from time decay. So oh, here it is, long call, assuming market advance at all time highs. Here it is on July 21st, August 21st, on September 21st, the S&P 500 level, they got the money implied volatility. I just took, I made this back in July and August. So uh, I just guessed at what the market may be. But you can see how the micro -e mini options premium in points and in dollars. And um, see that you have the decrease in implied volatility. You have days to expiration, so you have time decay working against you, but yet the market rallied enough that the premium went from 111 to 124.25 to 140. So you turned a $555 option into a $700 option. So you made money on the trade, 
Um, it just you didn't move point for point with the underlying futures because one, you have time decay, and two, you have a decrease in implied volatility, and that's gonna both of those will negatively impact a long call position. All right. Okay, so let's uh, key takeaways here, and then we'll take some uh, Q and A. We're right at 6:45, so this is good. Our time is good. Uh, the micro options contract will benefit newer traders and those with smaller accounts. Micro e minis uh, have many advantages when compared with ETF and ETF options. Micro e mini options contracts allow newer traders to reduce risk from two viewpoints, margin and dollars at risk. Micro e mini options contracts offer all the great advantages of our larger product suite at one tenth the size. Micros can be used by traders, hedgers, spreaders, and smaller institutions. Micro e mini options traders enjoy around the clock trading accessibility. So anyone in the Asian time zone or European time zone should be able to use these as well. And we should have great market makers uh, making good markets um, uh, all, in all three time zones. For those new to futures and options, uh, those that are interested in opening account, talk to uh, Philip, uh, Philip Futures, and uh, they can get you started. It's really not pretty easy to open a futures account and an options account, but micro e mini futures and options, they must be traded from a futures account. At least in the United States, you have to uh, trade these things from a futures account. Opening an account is not complicated. Many online firms allow futures and options trading, but doing so requires a separate futures account. There may be minimum account thresholds and other requirements to trade options, and these can vary from FCM to FCM. Margin with futures is different than margin with stock, okay? Any strategy that can be done with E-mini options can be done with micro E-mini options. This includes straddles, strangles, verticals, combinations, condors, butterflies, all that. And given the four-dimensional nature of option, it's imperative that you do your homework. Uh, we have some tools. We talked about the quick strike option tool, and we have a daily options report. Just go to cmegroup.com slash equity options to learn more about some of our product offering. Whoops, hold on. And uh, there's two books you should read. One in particular, Options as a Strategic Investment by Lawrence McMillan. Uh, he sold about four or 500,000 copies of his book. Um, incredible. Uh, Learning about options is not as exciting as trading them. I'll tell you that right now. I read the book twice. It's a very, it's an excellent book. Um, it shows you how to calculate your upside, your downside. It goes over all the strategies in detail and which ones have the best chance of success. Uh, Shelly Natenberg's book, Options, Volatility, and Pricing, is also an excellent book, but it's skewed more towards the professional trader or the former floor traders, as we used to say. There's still some floor traders too, but uh, they trade mostly electronically now. But uh, you can go to cmegroup.com slash active traders slash micro e mini options to get more information. Uh, we're there. We have the Options Institute. Um, excuse me, not the Options Institute, the CME Institute. Uh, we have a lot of modules, a lot of courses, a lot of webinar, and we're, we're, we're there to help you on your learning curve, okay? And uh, final thought, start small. Uh, success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Robert Collier said that. That's a picture of Jeff Bezos. He started small. He started selling books online. And now he has completely upended the retail industry throughout the world. So there's nothing wrong with starting small. Jeff Bezos did. And now he's the richest man in the world. So uh, let's hope that you have equal success when you trade options on the micros here. So that's uh, the formal part of the, this webinar. Uh, we'll uh, take questions now. All right, David. Uh, if you're all set, I have uh, two questions on hand for you, for the audience. Uh, if you have any questions for Dave, uh, please type them into your question box and we'll attend to them very shortly. We have quite a bit of time, so we can address your questions. Uh, so just type them away. All right, first question uh, we have from Ramesh. Uh, he, he's asking if um, these options, the exercise function, is, is it American style or European style? I'm guessing it's American, but Dave, can we hear your views? Yeah, they're, actually they're both. Uh, the quarterly expirations are American style, all the rest. The weeklies and the end of month are European style. All right, um, next question from Ramesh as well. He's asking, is uh, margin required when trading defined risk spreads such as iron condors? Uh, the 
might want to contact Phillips margin department. But uh, in general, when you have a well-defined risk, if there's a certain amount of risk, there is a margin, but it won't be too much more than that, and it should be less than that. Again, that depends on the FCM. Uh, they have the right to change their margins if they want. But if you put a vertical spread on and the maximum risk is, you know, when you buy options, obviously you pay the premium up front. But if you, if you sell um, a bear spread with calls, okay? The maximum risk is... All right, Ramesh, uh, with regards to... Sorry, David, go on. So the maximum risk would be, you know, the difference between the strikes uh, minus the amount of premium taken in. So the margin should be very close to that. All right, thank you so much. Um, well, for those who are very new uh, to options trading and, and you want help and uh, support, uh, so we do offer one-to-one -one coaching sessions. So if you are new to trading or you, you just want a little bit more uh, advice from uh, 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 the right people who can give you advice on uh, um, how to get started, uh, please uh, let us know uh, after this seminar when we have a, a survey for you. Just indicate that, that you'd like us to get in touch with you and we could uh, form up a one-to-one -one coaching plan for you. In terms of, uh, David, I have a question for you. In terms of the um, options that you spoke about so far, for a beginner, which one should uh, a beginner look at and, and um, try to express his views via the quick strike system? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't get that. Can you repeat it? Yeah, so we we have the e mini options. Uh, would you would you be able to go through how uh, a beginner can get started with a quick strike system and you know like oh, yeah. have, understand how the four different dimensions of options uh, could work out and and learn through the process as well. Yeah, you just go to the CME Group website and in, uh, in the search bar type in quick strike. And you'll just have to register. You'll have to put in an email and maybe some information, but no, nothing, nothing detailed. And um, they up will pop this Quick Strike software, and you'll just you'll you have to work with it. Um, it's it's for a brand new trader that doesn't know a lot about options. It will seem confusing at first, but um, there are some class modules and course modules on the CME Institute that cover some of the things uh, on Quick Strike. But you just have to work with it. Put in a couple positions, put in a long call, put in a long straddle or a long strangle, and you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. But just go to cmegroup.com, I think, slash quick strike, and you'll get it, you'll get there. <clears throat> but you'll have to register a little bit. You'll have to put in an email address and your name, uh, and that's it, I believe. So that's uh, CME Group Quick Strike, yeah? CME Group uh, com slash Quick Strike. Try that. Okay. Um, or just uh, I'll group. just uh, share the link uh, on the on the chat. So you know, if anyone is keen uh, to learn more about Quick Strike, you have the link right there. In terms of uh, other resources for newbies, uh, what else would you recommend? What else should they read up on? Oh, definitely read Larry McMillan's book, Options, Asset Strategic Investment. It's an excellent book on all the various option strategies. You know, it's uh, almost every options trader I know learned about options from that book and from trading options. You'll learn more from trading them than reading a book. <laughs> But you got to have the basics. Oh, naturally, naturally. David, um, well, you know, I don't have any questions at the moment, but I have one for you again. Um, over the years, we, uh, we've done a lot of futures webinars, and options doesn't seem to be a very popular topic. Well, there, there is uh, quite a bit of interest in options, but why don't we see more material? Uh, materials on our options. 
Uh, we have a lot of material at the CME. We do, we do options webinars all the time. About half of what I do involves options. But if you go to the CME Institute, which you can get from the education tab on cmegroup.com, you'll see all sorts of options education and stuff like that. And that's the thing. If they're not as popular, it's because they require a lot more homework. Uh, they require four-dimensional thinking. And some people just, uh, they'd rather just do futures better different payoff um stuff like that but you know i think once uh and if you look at the volume and open interest same thing uh the options have about anywhere between 10 20 30 percent of the underlying average daily volume so you know we do uh, what 1.6 million 2 million e-mini s and p's a day we only do about uh you know Five or six hundred thousand e mini s and p five hundred options, so there's less there's a different liquidity it's it's a different dynamic it requires a lot more education, and some people just haven't gotten there yet Damien, um well you know compared to uh futures uh with uh you know if, if you do not uh, manage your risk properly uh, uh it, it it is quite a risky product. I mean, compared to futures and options with four-dimensional, uh, uh, I mean, paradigms where the the market could roll up. Um, in terms of risk management, um, are there are there more factors to think about, or how how would someone new? Uh, what would you recommend to someone new who's uh, uh, keen to learn more about risk management when trading options? Uh, I would go to the CME simulator and our education tab on cmegroup.com. We have a trading simulator and practice. Do practice trading. It's very realistic. They give you a um, $100,000 of fake money and you can, you can see how you're going to do. You can see, uh, but it, it just requires a little bit. It helps if you have a little bit better mathematical background, a little bit. You don't have to be a mathematician or a statistician, but if you're good with, you know, arithmetic and figures and, you know, if you're good with statistics and standard deviations, options may be well suited for you. But uh, when you when you do futures, all you have to worry about is, you know, they going up or down with um, options are more complicated. You can be wrong and make money and you can be right and lose money. So your risk management has to be just as good with options as it is with futures. The thing is, when you buy options, the most you can lose is the premium you put up. And that is something people people like that feature that the most they can lose is the premium. That that's a very big difference right there. And um um when you position it that way it just sounds uh um a lot more better. Uh because you know what you put in is actually what you lose and it can't be more than that. Um generally for options, um Options. We have well, in my time here. We've not had um, much, uh, many webinars on options, and I'm I'm very thankful for this opportunity to have you on board today uh, to talk about options as well as uh, uh, the various. Uh, I mean, a brief summary of options and how you use it for your trading. Uh, for more details, uh, members of the audience, uh, please uh, check out the chat box. Uh, Quick Strike. The link to Quick Strike is right there. If you have any other questions, uh, we probably have time for one more. Uh, if you like one-to-one uh, -one coaching uh, with uh, representatives of Phil Futures, uh, please do uh, put in your request uh, when we have uh, a post-webinar survey. Um, yes, Jerry, this webinar is recorded. Uh, we should have a, a link up uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, uh, and, and we will share the link to the video in our webinar follow-up email. All right, so if uh, there's no more questions, uh, I would like to thank you, David, for uh, waking up so early and uh, giving us the lowdown on options. And thank you for being a wonderful audience as well. I reckon you probably need to digest by watching the video and probably have questions for us later on. We'll be more than happy to address it. All right, thank you so much, David. Thank you. I uh, much appreciate uh, having you uh, invite us to speak. All right, till our next webinar, uh, we hope to see you there. Take care and goodbye.